The projections back in March and April did show that coronavirus would fade in June, but unfortunately, that's not what's happening in Florida. We now have enough data to show you how and where the virus is spreading, what is causing this, and what we can do about it. Let's start with a broader look at the problem. Here you see heading into this weekend, Florida is one of 14 states reporting the highest seven-day average of diagnosed cases through the entire pandemic. It's basically the southern half of the country. And Florida is one of four states that leap off the page with a 40% spike. Now let's get into why these numbers are surging. Part of it's due to more people in Florida getting tested. That's revealing more new cases that would have otherwise gone unreported. There are some companies that are mandating uh, their employees to be tested before they uh, go back. People going back to work and getting tested to make sure they're not infected, that's good. And confirmed cases going up because of expanded testing, that also is very good. And when the spike started last week, we hoped that's all there was to it. But we now have enough data to show that it's not just more testing. ProPublica data mapping shows how Florida compares to other states. We see Florida is meeting goals and faring better than other states in terms of expanded testing. But the rate of positive test is also a key indicator of whether the virus is fading or escalating. And we can see how the number of cases per 100,000 people is going up and the average percentage of positive tests is also going up. Now watch these lines all across the nation. They show where the rates of positive tests are going up or going down. We'll play this a couple of times to show you which way the needles are moving from place to place. You see the needles moving down in the middle Atlantic states and nudging up in the state of Florida. Now let's move on to what's causing the infection rates to spread. The incubation period is about two weeks and the spike started a couple of weeks after Memorial Day. So doctors are saying part of this is due to more people getting out and mixing together over Memorial Day holiday. That has a lot to do with, you know, yeah, people are more out and about. But Governor DeSantis says the data tells a different story as well. Something is happening in Florida that at first glance may not appear to make sense. As we showed you, the rate of positive tests is going up, indicating coronavirus is gaining strength. But at the same time, hospitalizations in some of the busiest parts of the state are going down. How can that be? Miami-Dade COVID hospitalizations are down 13 percent. Duval County, where they're going to have the Republican National Committee, Memorial Day weekend to the present, COVID hospitalizations are down 50 percent. Well, here's the reason. The virus is taking off, but the biggest hotspots are in rural parts of the state. And the biggest outbreaks are now popping up on farms and in farm communities. And what happens is these are workers that are working close together. Once one gets it, it tends to spread very rapidly. And those farm workers tend to be younger and in comparatively good health. So they may get sick, but statistically not to the point that many have to go to the hospital, which is how infection rates can go up while hospitalizations can go down in some of the busiest parts of the state. We're also seeing a big swing in infection rates from county to county, and the governor says the counties that have rates that have shot up to 10 to 15 percent tend to have two things in common. But the 10 to 15 percent counties is all because they either have agriculture outbreaks or prisons or both. Now, infection rates are also going up beyond prisons, jails and farming communities, as we're seeing in parts of Tampa Bay. And as St. Pete Mayor Rick Reisman and others have noted, the average age of those contracting the virus is going down. A greater percentage of younger people are catching it now, particularly those in the age range of 25 to 45. Well, those 25 to 45 year olds, the clinical consequences of them testing positive is usually very, very modest. Which once again can lead to a drop in hospitalizations in big cities while the virus continues to spread for now. But unless we can reverse this quickly, those younger and comparatively healthy people will interact with older and more vulnerable loved ones and co-workers and people they don't even know, potentially reigniting the nightmare we just went through. Which brings us to what we can do about it. In terms of the trends, the governor noted some counties like Broward and Miami-Dade are faring better than others like Palm Beach County. And the governor said the difference appears to be linked to the number of people who wear masks when they go out in public. I think Miami does more masking and Broward does more masking. I don't think they do it as much in Palm Beach. So they're looking at what may, um, you know, what we may do. 
They're uncomfortable. The CDC sent mixed signals about them early in the pandemic, and polling shows a small minority of people think wearing or not wearing them equates to some kind of political statement. Leaders in both parties will tell you it does not. Here's the Trump administration's top infectious disease expert. Please wear a mask. Here's our nation's Surgeon General. It's that easy. Here's our state Surgeon General. Consider wearing a mask in public. And here's the plea from our local officials. Please, please wear your mask. For better or worse, by this time next week, the data will likely tell us how many people are listening.